to actually keep your hearing. So I will try and bring it down a little bit though. Um, first of all, thank you, Leslie. I'm so excited to hold this. Um, I may get a little choked up, so I'm gonna try, but don't be surprised. I choked up the last time when I did this in Vegas. Um, I am extremely honored and humbled to have been selected to serve as Junior League of Oklahoma City President for this upcoming year. This was not my plan, despite what some people may think. Uh, I'm not going to lie, when I joined the Junior League of Las Vegas, I intended from day one to be its president. I told the current president, as a provisional, I intend on having your job shortly. Um, I did not mean to do that here. Um, <laughs> When I decided to move to Oklahoma City, the first person I spoke to about it was Ms. Sheena. And I was going to go ahead and go sustain her because I just finished my presidential year and I was going to just ride out the sunset. And Sheena said, no, you're not. She's like, you're gonna stay active. I was like, I don't know, it's been a lot. She's, but if, if you know Sheena, she gets her way, she got her way. So a lot of people may think, okay, I've done this job before, I'm not nervous. No, I am terrified. This is a beautiful, rich, vibrant organization that has such an amazing place in this community. Not that Vegas didn't, but this is a whole different ball game, guys. So do not be surprised if I am, for all the past presidents, I will be calling all of you. I will be asking so many questions. I will probably look like an idiot most days, but I have always found that it is better to know what you don't know and to ask the right people and the, ask the right questions. So be expecting some phone calls. Um, this last year has been hard. I don't know how many words we can use, how many times we can say pivot, how many times we can say adapt and change and everything else. But I wanna say that we have come out of this, I think, so much stronger. I think that we have found a degree of perseverance and grace and compassion, just like Leslie charged us with last year, that we might not have ever found if we had not been faced with the circumstances we were faced with. So I first just wanna say that I am so proud of the board that served this year, how hard they worked, how dedicated they were to the job, even when it was tough, how we all connected, even though we weren't in the room to connect. And I give a lot of that, obviously, to Leslie for her leadership. And despite the year that we just came out of, we were actually really financially stable. We were looking really good, guys. Okay? And our partnerships with our community partners are as strong as ever, and they are so excited for us to get back in there and do the work. So I'm not going to take up a lot of time this evening because I want y'all to go out and enjoy yourselves. I think the bar still may be open. And, you know, there's still probably drinking games to be had. So, what I want to challenge everyone here tonight, I want y'all to challenge yourselves to recommit to this organization. Yes. We've given grace yes. and we have allowed ourselves to do what we need to do, and that was the right thing to do. But we have obligations to our community. We have obligations to each other and to this organization. This organization has been going strong for almost 94 years. And as I've had many past presidents tell me, you can't kill the league. And you know why? Because the women of the league won't let it die. So, unlike Leslie, I don't do quotes. I don't do themes. I am the, I am business. I am all business. As I was telling Sheena in all of our transition meetings, I'm the plow horse here, okay guys? We have got some work to do, we gotta get our processes in line. I am a plow horse, I'm gonna dig my hands in deep and work. Every, the cheerleaders are on either side of me, Miss Leslie and Miss Sheena. So she will probably be the one with raw, raw, sis, boom, ball. But I did find a quote that I felt was proper for the evening. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Margaret Mead said that. And I believe that that is absolutely true. Our commitment to this organization is what's gonna bring us out of this last year and send us flying in blazing colors into our 100th anniversary in a couple years. So, it's time to get back to the work of Junior League. It's time to get back to the mission, promoting volunteerism, developing the potential of women, and effective and improving the community 
the effective action and leadership of trained volunteers. It's time to get back to our vision. The Junior League of Oklahoma City will empower volunteers to impact our community and enrich lives. It's time to recommit to our core values, like Leslie said, integrity, connection, accountability, respect, and excellence. It's time to recommit to our community and to our community partners. Leslie told you all about the wonderful work that Project Empower has done this year, and they are finding new partners every day. What an amazing signature project for a women's organization to have. <laughs> So I encourage all of you to take advantage of those trainings when they're offered and encourage your friends to attend too. It's time for us to recommit to our fundraising efforts. I don't think that's going to be hard this next year because Mistletoe Market is going to be the city convention center from the in person. I think this may be one of the most banner years for market that we've ever had. We've got Legacy and Legends coming up on February 26th. We finally get to meet Megan Malawi. and we're looking into grants, we're looking into more passive fundraising, how to make our annual campaign bigger and better. So I really encourage you to commit to that and help us to find partners who want to commit to that as well. And then we need to commit to each other, okay? This has been a hard year. We need to commit to re-engaging with our friends. We need to reach out to people that we don't know. Reach out to that prospective provisional. Reach out to that first year active that had the weird provision, weirdest provisional year ever. Make them feel welcome. As a transfer, it is really difficult when you don't know anyone to want to stay. So make an effort to introduce yourself to someone new every month if you can. You know, our general membership meetings are going to be back at Will Rogers. Um, we're hopeful. And in person, in person. So I'm really excited for us to have that opportunity to build new relationships. And part of our development as women leaders is to meet people who don't look like us, who don't talk like us, who didn't come from the same place as us. So reach out. I want us to reach out. Sustainers to actors, actors to sustainers. I want to build that relationship. That was one of my main goals when I was president of Las Vegas, was to make sure that the actors and the sustainers were as close as possible, within reason, of course. Y'all you know, have taken your break, it makes sense. Um, and then finally, I want to make my commitment to junior leaders. Sorry. I have already started working with our staff, Kelly and Helen, on processes that make things easier for all of us because I believe in working smarter, not harder. I believe that we can do things in faster and more effective me methods, and that means we can do more for ourselves and for our community. Ooh. I want to be a sounding board for all of you, for your concerns, your questions, the things you love, the things you don't. I want to hear it. Do not, but I will say, and I've had this conversation in a lot of my transition meetings, if you tell me something to my face, I'm going to forget it in about five minutes. <laughs> However, I am great with email. So please, please, feel free to email me. I am one of those people that if I don't see it, it is gone. But I want to be there for all of you. I don't want you all to feel that you can't ever reach out to me. And I think that I speak for the entire board that they are all of the same mind. We are here to support all of you in your efforts and your journey through Junior League of Oklahoma City. And then finally, I wanna look for the potential for innovation and growth. Where can we grow our membership? Where can we grow our fundraising dollars? What can we do to become one of the most premier leagues in the country and internationally, which I think we already are, but let's move it forward. Let's be even better. I want to say a couple of thank yous before I close out. I want to thank what I call my first friends, being a transfer. Obviously, I've already spoken about Sheena, but Tracy Frederick and Adrian Nobles and Hillary Ashton, I knew all of them before I came here, and they all made a special effort to have me sit with them, to introduce me to their friends, and that's part of the reason I'm standing here today. So I want to thank them for that. I want to thank all the past presidents for 
for their amazing leadership, for their advice, for their continued devotion to the organization. I especially want to thank a couple of sustainers that have been really important to me. Um, Kelly Crail, who was my advising, my sustaining advisor when I was finance VP, who when I said, I'm thinking about applying for PEE, encouraged me to do it, said yes, you should, you should throw your hat into the ring, and I appreciated that. Uh, Sue Ann Hyde, who's also my Pi Pi sister, um, who has been so lovely and always willing to offer great advice. Um, Beth Short, obviously, for yeah, stepping up and agreeing to be my sustaining advisor. Even though we only have a young relationship, we've only known each other a short while, she's already given me great counsel um, and support. And then Margaret and Ann Clore for being such amazing sustaining advisors for the two girls. And then a special little shout out to Pam Newby for uh, letting Jacob come over to special care because it's been awesome. He's happy to potty train, guys, and it's only because of special care. Okay, that was my plug for special care. <laughs> but amazing. Um, I want to then thank Mandy Heaps. Mandy, yeah. you really inspired me to think about the job and not to look at it as a job, to look at it as an experience and an honor and something that I didn't really think I wanted to do, but I appreciate your encouragement. Yeah. I want to thank Leslie. And I'm not going to cry because I already cried at the joint board meeting a lot. I cried a lot when talking about Leslie, but Leslie has been such a good friend to me this year. She has been so supportive. She has been so encouraging. As you all know, she has the patience of a saint yes. and the grace as well. And, and I, as she said, I'm the business person. I'm a little blunt. I'm a little rough around the edges. I have learned so much <laughs> watching her. Um, and it, it, it truly has affected my skill set and the way that I approach people, and I cannot thank you enough for that. Um, I so look forward to working with this incoming board. They have been amazing during our training. They've been amazing with all the pivots. We've had to make, we, you know, we didn't get to have our traditional board retreat, but these women were committed, and we did so much work. Sheena, I'm so excited for you to get to experience this journey. You'll get to be here next year, but I know you've already started preparing your speech, so. <laughs> Not gonna lie, ladies, this was prepared last night, or maybe this morning. <laughs> and you didn't already know I'm kind of a procrastinator, and that's just my nature. Um, finally, I wanna thank my family. This is my sister, Megan, in the uh, pink shirt. Megan has been instrumental to my efforts to be in this job this year. She comes over many nights a week. She cooks dinner. She helps me with Jacob. She runs errands for me. She has been the best sister ever. It, it's been really great. Don't cry, Meg, because it will totally wipe me out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to thank my husband, Andre. I'm really sorry I'm putting you through this for a second time. <laughs> and it's order because we have a two-year-old terrorist that just constantly is trying to kill us. He's a darling boy, but mm, there are days. Almost, maybe almost potty trained, I don't know. But Andre, you have been very supportive and understanding and have made this, uh, you have made this journey so much easier for me and more enjoyable. And I promise you, it will not be that bad. <laughs> I took Jacob to market at six weeks old and kept him there all day while I was treasurer. So I could just take Jacob places. It'll be fine. Then I still cook dinner. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, I think if Jacob were here, which I almost brought him, but be grateful I did not, um, I, would, I would thank Jacob to the extent that I have developed a new level of understanding and compassion myself by having little Jacob, and I've got to understand other women and the struggles and the reality of life by having him, so if he were here. But he will not be making a speech next year because he'll be three and that's <laughs> gobbledygook. Um, so in closing, I just want to relay to you all how excited and just absolutely grateful that I get to take on this role this next year, that I get to see all of you in person, so excited, that I get to work with all of you, that we get to commit ourselves to this organization, to its purpose in the community, 
commit ourselves to being the best versions that we can be of ourselves. And I promise and I commit to be the best president that I can be. So thank you very much. Yeah.